We're in Matthew chapter 1, if you would please, and let's turn there if we can. And let's stand together as we read just this section. And uh, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, let's read it responsibly. I'll read uh, the even numbers, you read the odd numbers with me. Are you ready? Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, or this is how it happened. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, But while he thought on these things, what's well, a good thing? That's one thing I like about Joseph. He thought about something before he opened his big mouth and did something. While he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord, the messenger of the Lord, appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till he had brought forth his firstborn son, our Heavenly Father, thank you for the joy to be back with the church family. Boy, did I miss being here. I am the most comfortable in any worship situation and, and uh, with my friends and our colleagues and our family members here at First Baptist. I thank you for that. Pray you bless our Spanish congregation as they're uh, making their way over to the Baptist, uh, City Baptist. I pray you bless them. Thank you, Lord, for the soul saved, the effort given, the witness that was shared. Thank you, Lord, for the work that was done. But we pray you'd please speak to our heart this evening. I think of something extremely important that all of us need to consider. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. My text this evening is verse number 19. Look at it with me, if you would, please. It's talking about how, how the Christmas story came about. And, and he tells us it was on this wise, or this is how it happened. Um, Mary was a virgin, and that's important. The virgin birth is one of the main pillars of her doctrinal purity and, and tenets. We believe that. Because if Joseph or any other man would have been the, uh, the father of Jesus, what would he have been? He would have been a sinner. Yeah, the Bible says when Adam sinned, so then death passed upon all men for all of sin. One thing we all have in common with every other human being, with the exception of Jesus, we all have a human father. And we have his blood and his DNA in us, all the way back to Adam. So the virgin birth was a big deal because if Joseph or anyone else would have been his father, he would have been, had a sin nature, and his sacrifice would not be sufficient. If I died on the cross, you died on the cross, you wouldn't pay for anyone's sin. So the virgin birth is important. And of course, Joseph found out that, um, that Mary was expecting a baby. And he knew that they had not come together, though they had already done their vows and had, had already agreed and made their commitment to each other. They had not come together as a married couple as of yet. They were a spouse, that was, they, that, that, was his, that was his wife, he was her husband, but they had not come together in intimacy yet, and he finds out she has a baby coming, and he's frustrated, he's, he's alarmed, he's surprised. And then, while he thought about those things, he wasn't willing, he was a just man, and he wasn't willing to make her a public example. He didn't want to embarrass her publicly. His love for her was very admirable. He was, could certainly have divorced her in a public setting in town hall and got it into the, the local scuttlebutt or gossip column and going around. And, but he thought, you know what? I, I'm disappointed as I can be, but I am not. I want to treat her right. I do not want to make her a public example. And so he said, if I'm going to have to be divorced of her, and give her a writ of divorcement, I'm going to do it privately, quietly. But while he thought on these things, the Lord sent his messenger, an angel, to him to tell him, look, 
You're good. She is going to have a baby. It's not your baby. It's my baby. It is God's son. She's going to carry the Christ child. She's going to be the Messiah. And he began to tell him about the Old Testament prophecy that came out of Isaiah. Behold, a virgin would conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. means God with us. Jesus is God. And he would be with us. And then, of course, he woke up and realized that. And, and he said, okay, then I'm gonna, we're going to be husband and wife, but I will not be intimate until the baby is born. And that's what the story tells us. But I want you to think real quickly on the, the compliment that God gave Joseph in this story in verse 19. It says, Joseph being a just man. What does it mean to be just? I love the, the, uh, the verse of Scripture in Genesis chapter 18, and verse 19. The Bible tells us of uh, his telling Abraham, God is getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he is walking with Abraham, and he seems to have a conversation, uh, God the Father, God the Son, and he asks the question, should we tell Abraham what's going to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah, or should we withhold that information from him? And then he responds to this in verse 19. He says, in Genesis 18, verse 19, I know him. I know Abraham. And he says two things about him. He will do justice and judgment. Justice in the Bible, to be a just person, is someone who treats another person right. Love is not feeling right about someone, but it's making the decision to treat that someone right. Judgment is making good decisions before God. It's just a living life by God's rules. That's judgments. Justice is treating my brother and sister correctly. And one of the things I think about the Christmas story is that Joseph was complimented by God in this passage as a just man. Let me ask you, would you have that compliment said of you? Would people say, you know, sister so-and-so, she is a just person. She treats people right. Do they say that about, I mean, they pay their bills on time. If they can't pay the bill, they go to them and find out, what do we need to do to fix this? I'm sorry, I'm delayed. Is it someone who is, is quick to criticize someone or quick to compliment somebody? How do they handle their inner working? Nothing quite skews your vision spiritually like an interpersonal conflict with another brother or sister. But here we find that God gives Joseph a compliment. says, you know what? This guy will treat people right. And because he was just, even with this in his face, with his wife, he perceives has been unfaithful to him, was not willing to air out the matter publicly. If he was going to divorce her, he was going to do it low-key so as not to, not to cause any more embarrassment than needs to happen to someone who had violated their espousal. It's a beautiful thing. Now, there are many verses in the Bible about being just. Tonight, I just want to take a few moments and turn back to the book of Proverbs and just see a few. We just have a few moments to be together, and we'll dismiss on time. But I want you to look at Proverbs, if you would, please, at chapter 3. Everybody get your Bibles out. Proverbs chapter 3. We'll be doing this for about 12 minutes, and then we're going to close the service down and be dismissed. But chapter 3... And let's look, if we can, please, at these attributes of a just person. Look at verse number 33, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 33. Would you read it out loud with me? Here's what the Bible says. The curse of the Lord is an... What do you think that means? For a just person. He said the house of the wicked, he said, it'll bring a curse of God. One thing you don't want to be is where a curse of God is. <laughs> I, I was thinking about this, and we'll probably say something about this on the radio this week in my planned uh, time on Grace to Grow. But I was thinking about that verse in Hebrews chapter 13, where the Bible tells us this, marriage is honorable in all. God loves marriage. Marriage is honorable. It ought to be married. It ought to be, weddings ought to be honorable. The couple ought to be honorable. It's an honorable thing to get married. 
And the Bible says the bed is undefiled. The physical relationship between a man and his wife is fine. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You know, one place you don't want to live in your life is under the judgment of God. The Bible says a cruel man is under a curse of God. The wicked man who doesn't treat his brother and sister right. I mean, I just go back and say parenthetically, marital relationships and, and, uh, and, and, and being together intimacy is beautiful when it's, and it's, it ought to be on fire when it's in the fireplace. The only place you'd want fire in your house is in the fireplace. In that fireplace, if you've got a fire going, it's a great thing going. The, the, the smoke can go right up that chimney, and it can be fine. But you put a fire anywhere else in your house, and you've got problems. For the physical relationship between a man and a woman, the only place it's safe and the only place it's right is in the fireplace of marriage. You burn it in the living room, you're going to have a problem. You go outside of marriage and find physical uh, intimacy with somebody else, you've got a problem. You find intimacy with someone else before you get married, you've got problems. It'll affect your mind, it'll affect your body, and it will affect your future. Well, you know, that's just, that's just old, 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 uh, old-timey thinking. No, that is Bible truth. And you don't want to live. Life is hard enough without living under the judgment and curse of God. One of the beautiful things the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, he says this, that, that the, the God blesses the habitation, the dwelling place, the house, the institution, the environment of a just man. One of the things we know that God is doing, he is watching how I treat you and how I treat others and how you treat others, and he's evaluating his blessings based upon that. I love our children. You love your children. You know, one of the things you can do for your child and your family and your home and your environment is make sure you treat people right. Make sure you, you treat people with, with grace, with forgiveness. Make sure you treat people with, with kindness and grace. Here the Bible says, a man who is just, he'll have the blessings of God upon his habitations. I don't know about you, but I like that benefit. Let's look real quick at another verse in chapter 10 and verse number 6. Would you look at chapter 10, verse 6? Let's read it together, can we please? Blessings are upon the head of the... But the violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Blessings upon the head of the just. wonder what that means. I don't know exactly all that means, but I think obviously your head governs your body. It speaks of leadership. The reason my hand went up in the air is because my head told to do that. The reason I can formulate the words that come out of my mouth is because my brain is making that happen. It's causing my diaphragm, my, my lungs, my teeth, my lips, my, uh, my, uh, uh, my tongue, all that to formulate the words I'm saying. But it's going from here and it's going out that direction. My left hand goes out because my head thinks it's a good idea. Well, the Bible says there's blessings on the head on the leadership of the just. If you're a leader in your home, you're a leader at your workplace, you're a, you're a leader on a ball team or a, on a bus route, you know one of the things you've got to make sure you do is make sure you treat people right. You'll have opportunities to crush people in leadership. You can push them down, you can step on them like ants, or you can exercise grace and kindness. One of the things that really, I think God watches that. He says, you know what, what, how are they treating one another? It was Jesus who said in John 13, 35, By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have love for me, love one for another. If a man say he loves God and doesn't love his brother and sister, doesn't treat them right, he's a liar. He uses very strong language there. The one of the things we admire, we admire about Joseph is that God called him a just man. He would treat people right. And the benefit of treating people right is God brings blessing to your home, to your environment, to your habitation. Number two, he brings blessing to your leadership. Let's look at another passage of Scripture, chapter 4 and verse 18 of Proverbs. Chapter 4, verse 18. You're listening good. Thank you very much for your attention this evening. Read it with me, chapter 4, verse 18. Here's another attribute of someone who treats others right, just. 
Ready? But the path of the just. Can we read it one more time? I want you to think about it. Maybe someone tell me, what do you think that means? Are you ready? Verse 18. But the path shineth more and more. It's a large auditorium, but like we take prayer requests. So someone tell me, Pastor, here's what I think that means. Just in a nutshell. Anybody have an idea? The path. Yes, sir. All right, that's a great thought. It's a shining example that continues on for generations. That's a great thought. The path of the justice is a shining light. The way that they're walking, a path. Anybody else have a thought or two that comes to your mind? Anybody? Yes, sir. Jack? Yeah, that's a good point. The longer you stay on the path of the just, treating people right, the longer... You know, someone said you can find someone who does the uh, successful person is someone who does the right thing, the right way, for the right reason, for a long time. Can you help me with that again? Someone who does the, the right, for the right, for a, boy, that's a pretty good recipe for success. Love is not feeling right about someone, it's treating them right. Whether you're an authority or you're in charge of something, the blessings of the Lord are upon the just. And here the Bible tells us that their path shines more and more. Here's my thought on this. I think someone who learns to treat people right, they have a clarity in their path. They have discernment. They're not skewed. You know, the Bible tells us like in in Hebrews chapter 12, when you run your race, He said, follow peace with all men, without which no man can see the Lord. If you're running a race and you've got people beside you and you're arguing with them, do you think you're going to run as fast if you were just keep your eyes on the Lord and kept on running to the end of the goal? No. Many people spend their whole life arguing with the person they're running with. Poking around, giving criticisms. We have this in in pastors sometimes. Just they can't, they can't stop criticizing each other and this person, that person. I don't know about you. We got more dirt in our own backyard to deal with than trying to chase everybody else's problems. But he said, you know, follow peace with all men without which no one can see the Lord. And I think the path of a just person shineth more and more, more clearly. Have you ever taken a, maybe a dark path at night without your phone, without a light? It's tough, stump, stumbling. But when you have a sharp light, Brother, Brother Mike Wolf and Brother Frank Recklage gave me one of those LED lights, big ones. and It's not real big, but it has a huge uh, scope of light. You're taking that with that. You, you're, you're in good shape. You can see everything. And the Bible says when somebody is just, they treat people right, their light shineth bright. They have more clarity to make decisions. We're going to have a few days where the temperature is going to drop and you ever get out in, the, in, in your, and you've got frost on your windshield, and you, you're in a hurry, but the, the, the froster's not going. You've got just a little bit of uh, things there. You're trying to drive looking like that. Don't do that, all right? Don't do that. Go ahead and scrape it all off. Get out there and do the hard thing, right? Be careful about that. But, you know, you, what you do need to have, make good decisions on your road, you need a clear vision. I think some people go through life and all they can see is a little bit of that thing. They're trying to make the good decisions. They can't see out the left window. They can't see out the right. They can't. All they're trying to do, and they have crashes after crash after crash because they're not willing to see clearly what God wants them to see. The path of the just is like a shining light. And I think I would agree with our brothers here, too. The longer you go on that path, the more of an example you become to others. Let's look at one more and we'll conclude. If we can, please, chapter 9 and verse number 9. Oh, let's, let's go to 10. Can we go to 10? I'm going to skip that one, and we'll come back to that maybe another night. Chapter 10, and let's look at verses 6 and 7. Are you ready? Ready? Let's read it together. Blessings are upon the head. Verse number 7. The memory of the just is what? Bless. You know, the, mem- the people you remember the most who have gone on to pass away, are people who treated people right. Wednesday, if the Lord lets me live till Wednesday, I will, for the 438th time, gather with people 
who have lost their loved one the last 19 years. And we'll stand and be a part of the service with Danny and Karen Mendez and little, little uh, Braden. We're certainly burdened for them, praying for them. But you know, the truth of the matter is I've been to a lot of services where you're trying to think of things that you can say good about the person. And there's just not much to say. Oh, you know, they like the Cubs. Well, praise the Lord. You know? Uh, oh, you know what? They're fishing. Oh, they love fishing. Or they like Harley Davidson's. Or they like this. Or this is, this. They, oh, they were all about I love Lucy. Well, that's wonderful. But you know, the truth of the matter is it's a beautiful thing when you get to a situation where someone has touched the lives of other people. They've done the right thing with their brother and sister. And the Bible says when you find someone like that, that memory of that person is just. And it's treasured long after their life, long after they've passed on. There's a lot of blessings to being just. I'm glad that Joseph was a just man. I'd like to be that kind of a man too. I'm sure you would as well. But this Christmas season, you have a few days to finish out 2019. Just a few days, we'll start writing 2020. Can you ever believe that is going to happen? We got just a few more days to write out 2019. Let's finish it a just lady, a just man, a just teenager. Things you'll never regret, kids, is, is obeying your mom and dad. You'll never regret honoring your parents. Never regret forgiving somebody you should forgive. Asking someone to forgive you. Let's find out, what does it mean to be just? There are tremendous benefits, and maybe you can keep studying the Bible. You'll find other ones. One of the things at the end of chapter 10 you'll see is that the words of a man, a just man, are extremely, they're like choice silver. People who treat people right when they speak, they speak wisdom and they speak edifying words. Anybody can tear down anybody. It takes no character to tear down someone. You want to see what, what, uh, what that's like? Go to the nursery. <laughs> okay, Our children naturally tear things down. Some people just never grow up. They, but the Bible says, let your, not let, let your words be corrupting. Let them be edifying and building up. I want to be a just person. I'd like to go to church with just people. I'd like for us to stand one day before the Lord and say, you know what? You are a just lady. You are a just man. You are a just teen. You learn to treat people with equity and wisdom.